defiance, it falls to the right of the chalk. Full singer one for two. She's grounded out to third. Singled back up the middle. Ziffel pulls the string, nothing doing. Well, can she strike out the side here? Bringing some heat. Nice hold by Caceres, but they say ball two. It's a good place to miss, though. Up in the zone with, with your gas, with your heat. Tried to guide that one over and okay. Home plate umpire did not make a definitive call, but it is ball three. We'll see if Ziffel comes after here. She does, and it's found straight back. It's a payoff pitch coming here. Ziffel looking to strike out the side. No rest for either of these two teams. As the 3-2... Delayed, call third strike. A backwards K, and Tegan Ziffel has her groove back. She strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left the board. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth, tied up at 2-2. You're watching DC TV Sports. <laughs> Bottom of the fourth, Tegan Ziffel getting it done in the circle, striking out the side in the top half of this frame. It's 2-2, so it will be Amara Jalad to lead it off. Viviana King Mayeku on deck and Izzy Ramirez in the hole. Jalad was at the plate when Bibbler got picked off at third in the last inning, so she will lead this one off. Taking a look at Vandekeer was really cruising up until that third inning. And then, I don't know if it was an adjustment at the plate, if there was discussion in the dugout about how to approach her. There's a healthy swing it's a coming up empty, but uh, they, they barreled her up. Yeah, I think it was a combination of lo mislocation and then also the Bulldogs being more aggressive early in the count. I think the two married each other and it put a couple runs on the board. Fouled back makes it two and two. Wind still strong, but maybe not quite as strong as it has been over the past couple of innings. Yeah, it's only down to 30 miles an hour Yeah, now. only. <laughs> it's balmy now. The 2-2. Two -two. Vandekeer explodes. Swung on and fouled straight back. We'll do it again. Again, we're talking about this after the quick work that Tegan Ziffel made of the Rough Riders in the top half of this frame. But Defiance, everybody trying to make up games, too, that were either washed or frozen out over the past two weeks. But they will be playing tomorrow as the 2-2 pulled a string, floats way upstairs. As the Bulldogs will be home against Perrysburg out of the Northern Lakes League. It's going to be a great test yep. against... Perrysburg, a Division I opponent who's consistently in very solid district athletes. regional action. Swing and a miss. She got her strike three, and Jalad strikes out for the second time in as many bats. Rough Riders, likewise, will have to catch a quick night's sleep before they're going to be back on the field, except they will be home. They take on Ottaville tomorrow. Yeah, for both these teams, just to get, again, getting back out here to play is, is big. You know, you got back-to-back -back games this weekend, but neither the team. The weather is, is also going to be much, much better much tomorrow. Better. But, but both these teams, it's their first game since a week ago. They, both teams have not played since Saturday. So maybe a little rust early on, but able to settle in. 0-1 the count to Viviana King-Mayeku. 
0 for 1 with a ground out to short. A little late on that swing as she fouls it back, and now she finds herself down deep in the count. No balls and two strikes. And the Defiance dugout alive with some chatter. One of the several, but I think probably the biggest difference between softball and baseball. Not to say that baseball doesn't have some lively characters and you can't have a dugout full of chatter, but the organized chants, the dances, it just gives a different flavor to oh, the sport. It's, there's a science to it. There's no doubt about <laughs> it. And, and, when, and there's a lot of creativity to it as well. What the chants are and how they get it delivered. We saw, you know, before the game, we saw... A lot of Saint, line dancing. Line dancing of the Defiance dugout and then the St. Mary's dugout. We saw, you know, kind of jump around like a mosh pit. Now Swing and a miss. Two up, two down via the there. strikeout. Izzy Ramirez will dig in from the right side, lined out to the first baseman Klosterman on the first pitch she saw in her first at bat all the way back in the second inning. This one, a shot to short, gobbled up by Hirschfeld. Sometimes you can barrel one up and not have anything to show for it, and that's the second time that's happened to Izzy Ramirez. She's put good wood on it, but right at the defense. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left the board. We are quickly through four. Bions two, St. Mary's two. You're watching DCTV Sports. <laughs> Head to the top of the fifth. The sun has been playing hide and seek from behind the clouds. It's been primarily, we'll call it a partly sunny day because we're optimists. It really got bright a couple of innings ago. The wind has picked back up again. I don't know if we'll get a shot of the stars and stripes in between the baseball and the softball complex, but it, it almost looks like it's going to pull the pole down as Tegan Zippel tries an off-speed pitch. Cadence Hirschfeld and it skims not being sarcastic but that flagpole is teetering yeah left to right it's moving it is extremely gusty we expected gusts again upwards of 45 miles an hour this afternoon Ooh, and that one off the inner thigh and cadence hirschfeld is trying to walk this one off now she's smiling aren't you gonna say it yeah, it's a grimace it's you feel that smile, one on a, a day grimace. like today <laughs> One and one. You know who doesn't feel sorry for? Tegan Zippel. That one just missed. Ball two. Zippel had success in the last inning with a couple of punch outs on the inside part of the plate, the middle half. She goes inside here. Deals gets the strike there. Evens the count up to two and two. Tegan Zippel. Looking for her fourth straight strikeout. She retired the side via the K and went downstairs there. That is a good piece of hitting by Cadence Hirschfeld. She had to drop the barrel of the bat down just to get a piece of that. That really speeds your bat up. Here we go again. Not quite chin music, but high and tight. And the count runs full. Knotted up in a 2-2 affair here. Zippel deals, pulled a string, got her swing and strike three. Give Zippel a lot of credit, a lot of guts there on that pitch. Full count and the confidence to throw the off-speed pitch for a strike. Cut caught Hirschfeld up front. That is a Premier Bank strikeout, four straight as Tegan Zippel. Four straight strikeouts, it's seven in a row yep. in terms of keeping those bases clean. 0 
Owen won the count to Addison Van de Keer. Counterpart versus counterpart. One and oh the count. Van de Keer walked in the first, struck out, but reached first on a pass ball in the second. Chops this one down to third. Nice movement, that's low and unable to pick it. Jalad couldn't quite get it at first. That was gonna be a tough play for the sophomore Gutierrez because not only did she have to come in, but it took her towards the third base line. And she's upset with herself as she's burying her head in her glove. I'll tell you what though, if you ask Jalad, she'll tell you she should have had that ball though. That is a tough, the short hop, usually a little easier than the long hop. So we're gonna have a courtesy runner at first base, it's going to be Claire Turner. And Gutierrez, you know, although it was, it was a play that could have been made, obviously she wants to put it chest high if possible. Unable to do so. Now we'll see. That breaks the streak of seven and put seven put outs in a row or seven outs in a row by defiance. Now that one's going to go down as an error on the throw. And Tegan Ziffel says, I'm just going to stay locked in. One and one the count to Ava Klosterman. Well, and played twice. Got a single, an RBI in the first at bat. And this one's a fly ball. That wind taking it over into right field. And nobody wants to collide with Izzy Ramirez. We saw that a couple weeks ago where she took out Taylor Bibbler. And that time, even though that might Number technically seven, be the seven. center fielder's call, Izzy Ramirez, she's looking over at her, they're smiling. The good, the good thing, though, there's, con there's communication. Communication. There is communication, and they had it figured out. So, obviously, that's all you can ask for. And Red, I know this is your first softball broadcast yes. with us, but Izzy Ramirez is a weight room freak. During basketball season, she is up. The YMCA is just across the parking lot on the other end of the football stadium here as the runner goes. Throw down to second. Got her! That is the first thrown out attempted steal by Caceres this season. And just like that, the threat is snuffed out here in the St. Mary's fifth. So score at 2-6, Cot stealing. And it will be Sandrak, instead of ending this inning, to lead it off next inning. No runs, no hits, no air. Check that one error, and nobody left the board. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth, all tied at two on DCTV Sports. Bottom of the fifth, we're working our way through the tail end of this one. St. Mary's scored a couple, one in the first, one in the second. Defiance answered with a crooked number on a home run by Ava Cullen in the bottom of the third. That's where we stand as we head to the bottom of the fifth, as it will be Caceres, Gutierrez, and then Cullen, all scheduled to take their cuts against, in the center circle, the sophomore, Addison Vandekeer the Rough Riders. It's the 1-0 pitch. This one lined into right center field, taking a tough angle on it as Weigel. It's going to roll all the way to the fence. This will be at least two. They're going to wave her around second. Play at the bag. It bounces off of her. Nice play to back it up by the pitcher, Vandekeer, but a lead off triple by Vita Caceres puts the go-ahead run just 60 feet away with nobody out. Well, we talked about her last event. She barreled up the ball and lined out the center field. And there, another smooth, sweet swing, taking it the other way. Number eight. And able to use her speed to get, get the triple. And have a courtesy runner for her. Chloe Seiler will be the courtesy runner. Right now, if you're Siler, you're not just waiting for a teammate, in this case, Bella Gutierrez, to put the bat on it. You gotta be able to read a ball in the dirt. If 
and bounces away or takes a funny hop. 60 feet is all that separates Defiance from the go-ahead run. Defiance is getting some positive production on the bottom of their lineup. Here today, Goodyear has singled her first time up. She's at the plate now. We said Sarah's with the triple. Barreled it up the first time as well. So that bottom of the lineup producing for the Bulldogs. And anytime you can get that bottom of the lineup to turn it over to the top of the lineup with people on base, that, that's what allows you to get big innings. This one misses upstairs. <laughs> Siler's got happy feet down at third base, just a freshman. Very good athlete, playing varsity for basketball, does so many things. Right now, assistant coach Josh Schock telling her, just stay cool, stay locked in. The 1-1, one -one, there it is, scooting past the catcher. That's going to be a wild pitch, and that will lead to the go-ahead run as Seiler crosses home plate. Gutierrez thought it was ball four. It was not. <laughs> but now the umpires are going to get together here, and I'm not sure. Check on the count. Was it well? Did he not have the right count? I think he's trying to verify that. I was going to say there wasn't any batter interference, so it couldn't have been for anything other than, I believe, the count. And the only statistic right now that really concerns Defiance is the scoreboards. It's three to two. I'm not sure why she thought that was ball four. I had two and one on my book, and that's what the board is showing. But Sometimes you get amped up, obviously. Game moves fast. Maybe mind moves a little fast. She'll dig back in. Right now, speaking of trying to slow things down, the sophomore Addison Vandekeer trying to do just that after giving up the lead off triple and then the wild pitch to allow the go ahead run home. And right now, again, you said a clean slate. Clear your head. Bases are empty. Barrel down and try to get the nine there, Gutierrez. This one is downstairs for ball four. So the lineup rolls over. Number two, Ava Cullen. Ava Cullen, one for two, but that one, a big one, a two-run homer. Back in the third, despite that 30 to 35 mile an hour wind, cleared the 205 mark in center field. She'll dig in for her third trip to the plate today. She gets a huge cut, high fly ball, deep to right field, and Weigel snow cones managed to keep it in her glove. Playing the wind, and that ball had a ton of English on it, and she hauls it in. Tell you what, though, Cullen isn't getting cheated. No, again, now it's being aggressive early in the nine, count, knowing you've got a strike number. thrower on the, on the mound who's trying to get ahead in the count, so you get, so it kind of, Narrows down, maybe pitch selection. You, you figure you're going to get a fastball with that being the case. And there's Cullen was just sitting on it and got you know, the barrel on it again. Not going on a pitch low and away. Taylor Bibbler, who was two for two today. Slapper from the left side has two infield singles to her credit. Trying to keep the rally going. Smacks down at this one. Oh. That one caught Aiden Young, and she is slow to get up. She forces a smile, but home plate umpire is going to give her a little bit of time to try and walk that one off. And in all honesty, it looks like she needs more than a few seconds. Coach Solomon coming out. That caught her waist down, tough spot just off the inside of the knee. That's one of those forced smiles, because if you don't smile, you're probably saying something that could get you in trouble. Right, she's gritting her teeth. And it's a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Down no, to a fine no, powder. You're absolutely right. And mm. All you can do is just smile. And what are you you're playing. You're playing catcher. It's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. You expect it to happen. And just those first, it doesn't matter. Those first couple minutes hurt. Now that will Flat leave a hurts. mark. But I'm sure she's going to wear it well. As this one downstairs, the throw down to second. As nice job to bluff by Gutierrez. It's a great secondary lead by Gutierrez to force that throw. Because on that pitch, she's. She's turning her head, turning her shoulders, making it look like she is taking off. And you never know if that's an errant throw to the outfield, maybe it will pick up an extra base. Swatting down. That was from our angle here. The press box is down the third base line. I wasn't sure if that was outside. It certainly didn't look like it was too low. 
It's now three and one. Vandekeer set to deal. That one paints the black on the outside corner, strike two. So full count, we'll see how aggressive Defiance wants to get with Gutierrez at first. They've already brought across the lead run off a leadoff triple by Vita Caceres. This one almost bunted back to the circle, and boy, that's close. And they get her on a bang, bang throw. Now that is a great job by Shadrach to get over, but I think Vandekeer waited just a second to mark or give Shadrach a little time to get over there, and it made the play a lot closer than it otherwise would have been. Score at 1-4. And on the play, Gutierrez takes second. See Ellie Ward here. It's had a tough afternoon at the plate. They have two punch outs, but obviously a dangerous at bat in that three hole. See if she can come up big here. She is off the plate. And as much as most of her teammates are either up in the box or on it, We'll see if we can't get another look from our home plate camera there after this leading up to this next pitch but she is back she is giving herself a lot of room not sure if she's anticipating being pitched inside or if that's just a little bit more comfortable for her, but maybe about a half a step closer to the top of the plate but still right in the heart of the box the 01 evens up the count Big hit here for the Bulldogs to get that insurance run with Ziffel in full command out there would be huge at this point if you're the Bulldogs. Got a good cut at it, fouled it straight back. Great effort. Young, man. yep. Got a little bit of a late beat on it, laid out. She gets style points there though. Love the effort there. I'm not sure how tall she is, but she doesn't look like she's probably much more than maybe 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, Just a tough little player. A one, two. Pulled a string, and that's a called strike three. So Ellie Ward struggling at the plate today. Third strikeout in as many at bats. Not before Defiance, though, picks up the go-ahead run. It comes on one hit. No errors, and one left the board. We'll head to the top of the sixth. Bulldogs three, Rough Riders two. You're watching DC TV Sports. Oh, uh, we rejoin you here at Defiance just seconds too late, ladies and gentlemen, as Rhett Boyd was grooving to Taylor Swift, the play over music. Listen, I got a 10-year-old daughter. <laughs> so I got a lot of practice with all these Taylor Swift songs that she's fully You actually fully know engaged. the lyrics oh, yeah. you sing along with? Well. Ground ball through the wickets of Gutierrez at third. That's going to be one. And quickly on it, taking the look at the turn at first, but Shadrach decides the better of it to stay put, and that's going to be a tough second error of the afternoon for the sophomore third baseman for Defiance. Yeah, for St. Mary's, yeah, Mary's yeah. best thing you can ask for here, down one, you get the leadoff run around. We'll see if they play a little small ball here with Kaylee Smith, try to get the runner in scoring position with less than two outs. Late in the ball game. Yep. Smith 0 for two. That was kind of a half attempt at a slap and half attempt of a bunt. It's 100% a strike as she comes up empty. Tegan Ziffel just needs to bear down at one point in time. She struck out four in a row. This one's upstairs. Let's not forget, too, Caceres throwing out her first runner attempted stealing yeah. this season. That was a great, great uh, 
transfer, yep. quick transfer. The ball got out of her hand and threw a strike to second base. 1-1. Well, one, one. Make it 1-2. and two. With a body language there for Smith leads me to believe she thought she was going to do something with that pitch. And now you're defensive at 1-2. and two. Zippel. Swing and a miss right above the letters. I don't know that that had all the gas on it that she usually does, but that was one of those what we used to call get me over fastballs. Kenzie Henning up to the plate. Put the ball in play both times. Come back here. The shot. Ooh, here's a, here's a oh, this is a bunt. It's dead and dand. Caceres is going to have to eat the softball. Thought we might see that with the, the last at bat. But when, unable to get it done. And, but nonetheless, heading perfect. No, perfect four, spot. Good nine. speed. So now we got, you got your situation here. You got runner in scoring position. And now we'll have a meeting in the circle. There's only one out. We're talk about their defense here with first well, and second, second and one out. Again, if the ball finds you, where are you going with it? You got to force at first, second, or third. Coach Solomon's going to come in, have a chat with Aiden Young. Aiden Young has been a strikeout victim in both plate appearances here. So I think if you're Zippel one, you can just you know, bring your football arsenal and go right at her and attack. Don't try to nibble. If there was nobody out, this is clearly a sacrifice situation, especially with the sophomore Aiden Young entering today's contest, hitting just a buck 20. But I'll throw this out at you. Do you ask her to sacrifice herself again here? She I, swings and misses. I would not. I would not because, you know, obviously for what you just, reasons you just said, I think you're trying to tell her to be aggressive. Be aggressive early in the count. Because when you look, because you look behind, you got the nine hitter behind her, who's also been a strikeout victim, and reached out an air. Oh boy, this one is tagged deep to center field. Bibbler going back, and it's over her head. It will score one, as there was almost a collision. We almost had runners pass each other on the base pass, but it will score the tying run. That ball didn't miss getting out of here by much. It did not. What a shot by Aiden Young. A tough day at the plate. Coming into that at Ross. bat, but that time again barreled it up, deep center field. Well, Henning takes third. She almost collided with Shadrack, and again, I wasn't sure if you got to really pay attention for that. It's not something you see often. Well, I think Shadrack was worried about the ball being caught, and if it was, the problem was they weren't aware of where each other was on the correct. base paths. And if you pass, if the trail runner passes the lead runner, you've got an automatic out. But as it stands, we are tied at three. And stolen base, checking the swing there, and nothing doing. As Young is now at second. Might have been a dangerous kind of bunt for a hitter. A safety squeeze there with the runner on third, less than two outs. Trying to get the go-ahead run here late in this ball game. One one, pulling a string, and that's a beauty placed on the inside corner for a strike. One and two. Find a way, if you're Ashton Ross, find a way to put the ball in play. Try to push this go-ahead run across. Swings and misses, that squirts out of the glove. Well, Jack could come into play here, right? Open base at first, if you drop your strike, you gotta make sure you go and force the throw. The board reads one and two. I believe that is the correct count. Zipple needs a strike out here. Bound straight back, we'll do it again. It's gonna be important for Kassar as squeeze that third strike. Mm -hmm. Very open stance by Ross. She's 0 for 2 today. She reached on an error and struck out looking back in the fourth. She takes a ball here. They went two strikes. That's a tough pitch to to lay off of, but up up in the shoulder area. Nice and Ross. two and two. Holding strong there in the box. Big pitch coming up here from Zippel. This one a liner. Oh, what a snare at second base by Krebs. They go to second. They've got her dead to rights for the double play. Holy cow. Big time defensive play for the Bulldogs. Score at 4-6 on the twin killing. As Ross is technically the second out, 
and Young the third out as she drifted off the bag. And that is arguably the game saver right now. There's no question about that. That could have scored two if that ball got through. Well, we will keep it here as we head to the bottom of the six as we'll get our Mark Motes Ford bottom of the inning stat summary as one run comes home on two hits, one error, one left the board, and it could have been a lot worse for Defiance if not for the fantastic leather being flashed at second base by freshman Story Krebs. All right, so let's go ahead and give a quick look. Let's start with the pitchers. Wave, that's his backside. Some say it's his best side. Uh, yeah. We welcome you up back here in the booth, but I look down here, and in particular, let's start uh, in the center circle for Tegan Zippel. Now looking down here, doing a quick cursory check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strikeouts on the day. Look, she got touched up early, but Rhett, you were talking about runners left on base, and I'll leave that stat to you, but it could have been a lot worse. It was fortunate for Defiance that St. Mary's only scored two runs in those first two innings. Well, even look at the last the inning where they were able to tie it up. The three innings where they put a run on the board, they left eight on base in those exact same three innings. So even though you're able to put one, put one across in those three innings, it could have been a lot worse if you're Defiance, but you're able to make enough plays, whether it's uh, on the bump, getting the punch out, or that defense like you saw there at the end of that last half inning, making a big play to double up St. Mary's uh, to keep this game tied. So as we head to the bottom of the six, that will be four, five, and six. Zippel, Jalad, and King Mayakul trying to get back on top as we're knotted at three. As that's a little bit of a long swing by Zippel for a strike. On the flip side, Addison Vandekeer started strong. She was untouchable. And all of a sudden, Defiance has been able to score that big crooked number, obviously with the two-run homer by Ava Cullen in the third. But they have looked a lot more aggressive at the plate. That swing not included as Tegan Zippel very upset at herself. She couldn't check up on a ball that was well above her visor. Yeah, she got caught up in between. Just not even didn't have enough time to hold up there. But yeah, we'll see. Again, I think if you're Defiance, I think the adjustment you made is you're just being more aggressive early in the count. There's Vandekeer there with the punch out. But they've been more aggressive early in the count, able to barrel up some balls. And I think in the coaching staff, when they look at Number it, 21, Amira they look, this, you know, this young lady's around the plate. She's a strike thrower. You know, we got to be able to make sure we don't get behind in the count. Be aggressive early. And then well, they'll be able to take advantage of it. Not just a strike thrower, but that's her eighth strikeout of the afternoon. So you got a pair of power pitchers that are going after each other. It's, that's a heavy swing by Amira Jalad. Speaking of strikeouts, Amira Jalad is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Vandekeer is going to take a little extra time. Jalad right in the heart of the box. Jalad would love nothing more than to flip the script here in her third at bat. The 0-1. Boy, that was a nasty curveball. That had a ton of lateral break on it, and she swung right over it. Strike two. That was a nasty pitch. 0-2. Oh see what she elects to come with here. Buster inside, and that hit her. Nope, it was a called third strike, and it was dropped. Throw down to first, and they get her. Two away on the second strikeout. Score at 2-3. That's another Premier Bank strikeout. Number 10, Viviana King Mayakou. So Viviana King Mayakou will stroll to the plate with two down. She is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. So that one misses upstairs. It's a good response by the St. Mary's and Vandekeer here. You, you tie the game up and you're able to come right back defensively. Boom, boom, you get two quick outs. If they can get out of this inning quickly here, try to build up that momentum that they've had in the top of the sixth. 2 and 0, oh, and something wrong with the face mask? Seemed like something about it, and they're going to. Yeah, the going with a second set of gear here. I don't know if the strap broke or some padding did, but. She's going to a an alternative one. 
Yeah, not uncommon to see many of the infielders in softball. Right there is a good look. As you look over at first base at Klosterman to wear the mask as well. We're only talking 60 feet in between bases. Ball gets on you a lot quicker. So this one fouled straight back. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Boy, she's got that curve really working right now. Good, good, good placement, too, on that outer edge. And even if Mayaku makes contact, it could be good contact to the right side with that ball tailing away. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This one, a little humpback liner into shallow center field. It will get down. A two-out single for Viviana King, Mayaku, and the go-ahead run on board here. We'll see if Izzy Ramirez, who has made really good contact in two at-bats and doesn't have a hit to show for it, can maybe make the third time a charm. We'll see, too, if Defiance wants to try to get Maya, King Mayaku in scoring position, maybe with a straight steal to where a Ramirez base hit could score her. I know, I know there's two outs and there's some risk to that, but also, you want to have an opportunity with one hit to score that run. Right now, the runner on first is going to take two, most likely. Well, Izzy Ramirez has shown that she's a good contact hitter. So, again, if you've, if you've got a light hitter in the box, that's a different story. Although, my story on Izzy Ramirez was trying to pump her up last <laughs> inning, and it got ended due to the, the quick out. But she is in incredible shape. Very strong young lady. Forces a smile there as that swing was almost all arm. And she knew she got fooled on one, two and one. But she is up well before the crack of dawn every day to lift independently. She's a soccer on the, uh, pardon me, a goalie on the soccer team. Swing and a miss there. And she just knows one gear as Vandekeer strikes out the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. Go ahead, run left the board. We're through six. We'll head to the seventh. Defiance three, St. Mary's three. You're watching DCTV Sports. Top of the seventh brings up the top of the order for St. Mary's. Nothing decided here at Defiance. It's been a pitcher's duel with just enough offense to keep things interesting as we're knotted at three all. And Tegan Zippel trying to make sure that's the case as they head to the bottom of the spring. She will deal to Kelly Holsinger, who will lead it off. 0-1 count now evens up. Holsinger has a base hit RBI earlier in this ball game. Struck out her last time up. This has been a heck of a battle back and forth here this afternoon between Holsinger and Ziffel on the mound. Ziffel misses high and inside. Did I see 3 0 being shown by the home plate umpire there? Yeah, I did. There's the obligatory 3 0 fastball for a strike, make it 3 and 1. See what Zippel comes with again. She does, and the take was on. Again, it's clear St. Mary's is going to try and find a way to get aboard, and a walk is just as good as a hit. But now you've got to offer it anything around the plate. Let's see what Zippel goes to here. She went 
the rise ball. Oh, that's a tough one, and nicely played by Krebs to hustle over and make the catch with the first baseman in. It was her play or nobody's. Number three, good lateral Chris movement Stone. there by Story Krebs. By Krebs, yeah, to just run that ball down. Also keeps one of your fastest base runners off the paths. If you St. Mary's, that'll bring up Caden Hirschfeld. Dig and Ziffel. Ziffel's had Hirschfeld's number here. Strikeouts mm -hmm. each of the last two plate appearances. Deals here. Boy, she was way late. You can see Hirschfeld shaking her head. I think she was sitting something else and couldn't lay off the fastball and just couldn't catch up to it. And that's part of the problem when you get, I don't want to say fooled, there she was there, and she drops to a knee, and that was just too much power by Tegan Ziffel. Ziffel right now ahead of the count. You can go to your full arsenal here. See if you can't get Hirschfeld to chase out of the zone. I'm hoping to sit down and talk with Tegan Ziffel in the coming weeks to find out what she would call her out pitch. But right there, that was a beauty after falling behind 1-0. and oh, Three pellets for strike three. Well, looking ahead for Defiance in the bottom of the seventh will be the bottom of the order. Caceres, Gutierrez, and then it rolls over for Cullen. And that's been a productive part of their, of their lineup here this afternoon, setting the table for the top of the order. No one won the count to Addison Vandekeer. Very open, very narrow stance. She takes a delayed strike call here. Ziffel trying to make short work of the Rough Riders here in the top of the seventh. Get her mates to the plate to see if they can't win it in regulation. They do have lights here. As this one fouled straight back, and they may be needed because some long shadows being cast as the sun slowly starts to set here. Right now, primarily over the infield, the last vestiges of sunlight would be where Story Krebs is standing at at second base. As Ziffel pounding her fist onto her hip, she tried to, I'm not sure what she tried to bring there. That ball off just speed. rolled it across was, the plate. I'm gonna think change up. Yeah, I think she's looking to go off speed there. and Just lost the handle on it. The one, two, got her swing and it doesn't matter as she shows some emotion, smacking her fist into her mitt. She strikes out two of the three hitters she faces here in the top of the seventh and keeps the Rough Riders off the board. No runs, hits, errors, or anybody left the board. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. A run wins it for Defiance. Don't you go anywhere. We're back on DCTV Sports. Bottom of the seventh, Defiance, St. Mary's, knotted up at three. A run wins it for the Bulldogs. It will be eight, nine, and then the leadoff hitter. Stepping up for the third time in this ballgame against Addison Vandekeer, the sophomore hurler. Looked unstoppable, but gave up a two-run homer in the third and then a run in the fifth. As Caceres is one for two with a fly out deep to center and a triple. She takes a one, pardon me, an 0 1 pitch above the visor. Well, she's had two great swings. She uh, has. Against Vanderkeer, a line out the center and then the, the triple. And she, it's been early in the count. The 1 1, Vanderkeer deals. She's trying to get her to chase, changing eye level, and Caceres has not fit. 2-1 here. Let's see if she gets something to work with. Vandekeer fussing with the ball along the hip trouser there. Deals, and that is a strike on the outside corner. Vandekeer 2-2. Two two. 
Obviously, your, your out pitch is your fastball, but do you have the courage to throw your off-speed pitch, risking going full count? She threw a curve that last time, and that's been a pitch that's really been working. That's a little tight on the shot. Come back a bit, please, Will. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The big out. For Vandekure, someone who's been a thorn in your side all game long. Bring up Bella Gutierrez, who's had a single in her first at bat, walked in her last at bat. Perfect on the day. Doesn't matter how you get there, just get there. Just get there. Turn it over to the top of your lineup. First pitch. Strike one on the inside corner. Yeah, I see that more and more too in softball and baseball over the last couple of years. Is you know, Gutierrez is a you know, she could easily be your leadoff hitter, right? Or your, your, maybe your second hitter. Good contact, uh, good contact hitter, good speed. Now, but what you see coaches are doing in both softball and baseball the last few years, they're putting one of those type, those prototypical type of leadoff second hitters at the bottom of the lineup. Why? Because if contact hitters, they can get on base. You can turn it over to your top of your lineup with traffic on the base pass. That can set you up for at least one, maybe a big inning. Well, that is a delayed strike call by the home plate umpire. Now one and two to count. Well, and again, depending on what level you're talking about, but certainly at the prep level, Rhett, sometimes you only have two, maybe three spots in a lineup where the pitcher really has to worry about what they're going to throw. And the last thing you want basically is a black hole or no man's land from, say, six through nine, right. yeah. five through nine. Correct. Absolutely. You're, lengthen, you're doing it to lengthen your lineup. 2-2. Two -two, she swung, couldn't lay off the letter high heat. Gutierrez is a strikeout victim. Two away here in the seventh. That'll bring up Cullen. Ava Cullen, one for three. She struck out swinging in the first. Barreled one up. Easily over the 205 mark in center field for a two run shot in the third. She put the barrel on it back in the fifth, too, to right field. Not for a great running catch by Weigel. And she was waiting for what looked like a rise ball there and fouled it straight back. Oh, and one. Very open stance. This one popped up, traveling. That wind is playing games with it and battling the sun as well. Bailey Weigel drops to a knee. She doesn't have shades on, but she makes the catch. Defiance goes in order here in the bottom of the seventh. We get to bring you bonus ball. We'll head to the top of the eighth. No change in our score, three all. You're watching DC TV Sports. She's Top of the eighth, regulation will not hold this one. Defiance three, St. Mary's three. It'll be four, five, and six. Klosterman, Shadrach, and Smith to face Tegan Zippel. So Tegan Zippel just threw a change up to start the at bat, had Klosterman all twisted up inside. Delayed strike call on the inside corner, and Zippel now ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Save a Klosterman. One for three, singled and scored. Back in the first inning, she's grounded out the third. She's flown out to right. Ziffel toes the rubber, goes through her windup, and that one again rolls across the heart of the plate. 
seen her go to the off-speed pitch a little bit more here later in the ball game, just changing the look. Trying to keep this St. Mary's lineup honest at the plate. Gets the signal from the dugout. Deals, misses upstairs. Now the WBL going to be interesting to follow this season. Once the schedule actually does finally get up and going. This one late, fouled away. That won't quite get over to the baseball diamond. Defiance's baseball team was supposed to be at St. Mary's tonight. And my guess is with the rain, they elected to come up here since Defiance has turf. Swing and a miss. It's in and out of the glove. And she was completely unaware of it. Her teammates were screaming for Klosterman to run. Score to strike out and then 2-3 for the first out of the eighth. Now batting number 20, Shadrach. Alexis Shadrach will stroll to the plate. She is 0 for 2 tonight. Walked in the first. Struck out swinging in the third. Reached on an error in the sixth. Something to watch here. The last two, the, the first two batters of this inning. Ziffel has started out with changeups, off-speed pitches, and it has the St. Mary's hitters way out in front. The 0-1, swing and a miss. Josh Bush is telling me it's actually the JV that is playing on the baseball field right now. Varsity tomorrow, correct? Okay. The good ball game over there, too. Yeah, you know what? Good luck to the feeder system, right? These guys are going to be varsity players in another season or two. The 0-2. Nibble on the inside corner. As you look back to the off-speed pitch, Shadrach is way out in front of that first pitch of the at bat. You've got a little slack in the leash to work with if you're Ziffel here. Instead, she comes right at her and found straight back. Tegan Ziffel. Will she stay home, play for Defiance College? Will she stretch her legs a little bit? Had uh, Heidelberg, I think, was high on her list. Pulls the string there. Wherever she goes, the program's going to get a pretty gritty young pitcher. Two and two. Got to figure you're going to sit fastball here. And she does. Shadrach fouls it straight back. And you can hear the Rough Rider dugout. Live with some chatter. It's a big shot in the arm for them, too. Extra innings against one of the top teams in the WBL. You know, coming on the road. Called strike three on the inside corner. That's another Premier Bank strikeout, a backwards K. Makes it, two down. So for them, on the road, very young squad, three seniors. How about in number 10, look at Smith? seniors in their outfield everybody else is an underclassman several yep. sophomores in the lineup so come on the road against one of the top teams playing them into extra innings you know we'll see how the result is uh, but at the same time it's something that coach Solomon definitely in, in her staff and club can build off of. coach Parrish's Bulldogs entered today's contest at four and three overall coach Solomon's Rough Riders four and two this one a chopper it's going to be gobbled up by the shortstop and a good strong throw by Cullen Nice stretch by Jalad, and it's a one, two, three inning here in the top of the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left the board. We'll head to the bottom of the frame. Just like last time, a run wins it. We'll wait and see if Defiance has it in them. Back right after this on DC TV Sports. <laughs>
welcome you back to Defiance. We head to the bottom of the eighth. The run wins it. Bulldogs three, Rough Riders three. It will be two, three, and four. Bibbler, Ward, and Zipple. Bibbler has had herself a tremendous game at the plate. She's two for three with a pair of infield singles, a pair of stolen bases. She hit into a one four fielder's choice, I believe, in her last time up. Looking at a no one count here, swatting down at it. And I tell you what, <laughs> they'd better hope she slaps Holsinger. because Holsinger's almost on top of the plates. Well, she's, she's had her two base hits are perfect slaps, perfect location on that third baseline, and that's what St. Mary's protecting against. Both corners well up the line on the 0-2 pitch. She swats down on it, and that's strike three. It's an uncomfortable feeling if you're Holsinger in and you're the first baseman. Now batting number 14, Fosterman there, barreling downward. Just hope she doesn't swing and pull the ball down the line. So here's Ellie Ward. She's trying to put the ball in play for the first time tonight. A strikeout victim in her first three at bats. Takes downstairs here. As a matter of fact, two of those three were caught looking. Ellie Ward entered tonight's game. Hitting 667. This is a high chopper. Down to third. Uh, check that. It was popped up. I thought for a second our sideline here was partially blocked. But it was popped up. Now for the ball and that is two seven, away. Tegan Zippel. So here's Tegan Zippel. Zippel. Popped out in foul territory to the shortstop in the first. Walked in the third. Struck out swinging in the sixth. Trying to avoid going in order for the second straight inning. Takes a strike on the inside corner. By the way, the answer to the question that neither Rhett Boyd nor Tristan could answer up in the press box, Motley Crue. Going through some heavy metal bands of the 80s. Ooh, Ziffel went chasing well out of the strike zone as she puts her Hand on her helmet and just kind of forces a smile into the dugout. It's 0 and 2. O2 on the way, found straight back. Ziffel refuses to leave the box. Vandekeer looking for a one, two, three inning. Can she get her second straight? This one, a shot into right field. Played on a hop by Weigel, and the winning run is aboard with two outs. Good job by Ziffel, not trying to do too much with it. Just shot the ball out there to the opposite field. We should have time. We will have a courtesy runner, and this is the aforementioned Paulina George. Paulina, it's like the Bugs Bunny commercial. I see Paulina George at all nine positions. Right now, she is at first base, and she is the winning run. And Amira Jalad looking to break into the hit column for the first time yeah, tonight. She is 0 for 3 with yeah, three strikeouts. You know, just a matter of time. Sitting 417 on the year, six RBIs, and struggling tonight, but what a but no better time. She had a good rip there, and that yeah. ball squirts past the catcher. They're going to call it a foul ball. Yeah. No better time for her to find that groove once again. So Owen won the count. Vandekeer deals. Got her change eye level, swing and a miss, and now down deep in the count 0 and 2. Vandekeer, when she gets the ball up in the zone, it's, it's overpowering. Hard to catch up to. Boy, that sun, Allison looking out into the outfield. This one fouled straight back, out of play. It is setting. You can tell we're in spring right now because probably about a month ago, this place would have been pitch black and the lights would have <laughs> really been kicking in. But if you are on the right side of the field, whether it be the infield or the outfield, that setting sun is problematic. 
Swing and a miss, it doesn't matter. They have to go down to first. Apparently it was not cleanly fielded. So score to strike out, two, three. And Defiance is finished here in the eighth. No runs on a hit, no errors, and one left the board. We'll go to the top of the ninth. Still deadlocked at three. St. Mary's and Defiance, you're watching DC TV Sports. <laughs> Number one, they get a look at the shadows being cast from left to right here at Defiance. The setting sun, we are now just in front of 7.30 on a Friday evening. Deadlocked at three apiece, visiting St. Mary's and host Defiance. Tegan Zipfa will deal to the bottom of the order. Seven, eight, and nine, Henning, Young, and Ross. Henning tried to punt that first pitch up at the zone, just fouled it back. The 0-1, she went down, bent her knees on a pitch downstairs in the zone, now down on the count, 0-2. Rhett, that son, and understandably so, has the right side of the infield and the outfield all wearing their shades right now, and even Taylor Bibler in center. Holding a string, that was a changeup and a half, and that is a swing and a miss. Henning is a strikeout victim to lead off the ninth. Yep. Krebs at second, Jalad at first, Ramirez in right, and even Bibbler in center are all wearing their sunglasses. I look over and King Mayaku in left also has sunglasses on. So again, not to say that that could be an issue, but we saw it an inning ago when Weigel in right field had to drop to a knee. When Aiden Young at the plate struck out the first two times, but last time had a Got on base with a base hit deep. Base hit out to the deeper part of the ballpark and wouldn't like to, would love to do that again. 1-1, one, one, pulling a string and you can tell when Tegan Zippel doesn't have a good grip on her changeup because it turns into a worm burner. Two and one, she'll deal here. Whoa, high and tight. Came with a little something extra, and now she needs to be careful. Last thing you want to do is put the go ahead run aboard. Nick Mernick. And instead, it's ball four. The go ahead run is aboard. I'm looking here. A couple walks, three walks yeah, in the first when the temperature was cold and she was still trying to get a good feel for the ball. And since that first inning, she hasn't given up a walk until now. Well, Ashlyn Ross at the plate lined out the second base, which ended up being a inning ending double play where they doubled up the runner on second. But she had, she barreled she barreled that ball up, trying to do it again. This one, a slow grounder to second. Krebs comes up, oh, and throws it low. That's gonna mean an extra 60 feet as Young now into third. And the freshman putting her glove on her head that's where the speed of the game maybe just rushed her a little bit because I think she had more time than she thought. Yeah, without question. And it's just a, it's an unfortunate play there for Defiance, but all is not lost. It's first and third, tie ball game. And this is where right now, if you're taking Zippel, you would love to get a strikeout here, but you're gonna have to do it against the top of this St. Mary's yeah. lineup, Kelly Holsinger, who's one for four on the afternoon. Well, she was the one that lined into or at Krebs back in the seventh inning. Now batting for the Rough Riders, number six, Helsinger. She is one for four. 
today, but right now, no margin for error. And if you're taking Zipfel, you could really use a strikeout. Yeah, you need a strikeout or, or a soft fly ball to the infield here. There well, she, she got, got it. it. Is it playable? Drifting over and unable to as it bounces off the top of the dugout. Jalad was on it. And the infield fly is not in play with the no. with runners on first and third. I'm still watching Krebs as she smacks her fist into her glove. You got to be ready. The ball will find you again. How often does that happen? Off speed, it squirts past the catcher, but not far enough. However, it does allow Ross to take second base. It's a good decision there by Coach Solomon to keep the runner at third. Get your leadoff hitter up less than two outs. You don't want a chance in out here at the plate with less than two. Fouled straight back. Well, Holsinger hitting just a puck 74. Now looking at a 1-2 count. Basically, the infield is drawn in, especially at the corners. Zipful deals upstairs. Anytime you basically see a defense set up like this, you can automatically add about another 25 or 30 points to a hitter's average. Zipful ready to go. Fouled straight down. Great job by Zipple. Just continue continuing to come at the hitter, challenging, challenging them on the inner half. 2-2. Two -two. Does she have another inner? This one well struck deep to center field. Bibbler's on it, but it's more than deep enough for the runners to tag. And instead of throwing behind, they throw down the middle, and the go-ahead run scores on the sack fly by Holsinger. It's now four, three Rough Riders. Great job by Holsinger. Just fighting to stay alive, you know, in the at bat, following off a couple of pitches. Yeah, then you got one you could handle. Put a good swing on it, and you get the go ahead run to, to cross here in the top of the eighth. So Hirschfeld will dig in. 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. That all the way back in the first. She has struck out swinging in every at bat since. Takes a strike here to even up the count at 1-1. Now looking ahead for Defiance in the bottom of the ninth. They'll need at least one. It'll be 6, 7, and 8. Viviana King, Mayakul, Izzy Ramirez, and Vita Caceres. Two balls and a strike right now to Hirschfeld. Gave her a strike on the inside corner. That one jelly-legged Hirschfeld. Clearly she was looking for something out over the plate. There you get a good look at that sun beaming down on the right side, right into the face of Jalad. And the count now full. Zipfel really taking her time now. Big pitch. Payoff on the way. Fouled straight back. Well, she was early on that. If never seen that, maybe once or twice where you're that early, you almost foul the ball straight behind straight you. Straight behind you. Know, yeah, you curl it right around your body straight behind you. But she knows that she has to, she has to cheat a little bit to get to that fastball of Zippel. 3-2, fouled straight back. Ziffle ever had the confidence that, and she, we've seen it, she has, to throw that off-speed pitch right now. She would get her shell out way out in front. It's a matter of her confidence to be able to throw it for a strike in this situation. Boy, long look in that dugout, now checking her wrist. Checks the band. The 3-2 on the way again. Fouled straight back. I don't think there's any secret here. You talked about if she had more confidence, if this was a 70-degree day and maybe she had better feel for the ball, I could see her maybe thinking about that pitch, but right now, I don't think there's any secret what's coming. Here's my best. Can you get a piece yeah, of it? Best on best, and let's see who, who wins the battle. And that's the beauty of you know, the pitcher, you know, the pitcher batter scenario in the sport is. 3 2. She did bring a change up, and this is a fair ball down the left field line. It will score a run as Ross comes home, standing up into second base with a huge 
RBI double and a huge insurance run. It is now 5 3. Well, give, Saint Kate, Mary's. give Kate Turchard all the credit in the world. Three straight strikeouts going into that at bat. And we said she was cheating early to stay on the fastball. We, and we said it. If the changeup comes, she might be way out in front, but she was able to stay back just enough to jerk that ball down the left field line number seven, for the insurance run here in the top of the eighth. They're still looking for more. They need more, and they do. And, and we talked about their inability to to keep to keep innings going when they have scored an initial run. But put a two spot up here, looking for more. Vandekeer swings through this pitch. This should be one and one, correct? Ziffel taking a little more time. Now identifies the signal. It comes home. Swing and a miss. And that will do it for St. Mary's here in the top of the ninth, but not before the Rough Riders come up with two huge insurance runs. They come on one hit, one key error, and they leave one aboard. We'll head to the bottom of the ninth. Bulldogs need at least a pair, or this one is in the books. Don't go anywhere. We're back right after this on DCTV Sports. Bottom of the ninth back at Defiance. St. Mary's with two huge runs in the top half of this frame. They are three outs away or two runs away. Oh, slipping on the throw. What a pick at first by Klosterman. As Viviana King Maya Cool sent one to short, but right now the question is, is Hirschfield okay? She might be playing around a little bit, but the turf slipped or gave way underneath her, I should say. She slipped, and that was an incredible pick by Klosterman at first. It sure was. It sure was. And if you're going to win a big ball game on the road, you're going to have to make plays like that, and they were able to do so. So that will bring up Izzy Ramirez. She is 0 for 3. Barreled up the ball the first two times at bat and then struck out swinging in the sixth. Swing and a miss there. Vandekeer keeping the ball down in the zone right now. now she's, see if she changes the eye level here, way ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Buster inside and a called third strike. And Defiance down to their final out. Well, this has been a fantastic ball game. It's been a heck of a game, and you know both clubs have been able to take a punch and deliver, yep. and respond and deliver a punch as well. It's just who's yeah, going to be able to to be able to survive until they can push a couple across. St. Mary's is right now in in prime con position to win this game, but Vita Caseras had a couple of really good swings here. Uh, first pitch swinging here popped up into foul territory, and that's almost anticlimactic as Klosterman hauls it in, and there is your ball game. Well, going from having the winning run on just an inning prior to dropping this one by two, final score in extras, St. Mary's five, Defiance three. We will take a quick timeout. We'll have your Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame right after this. You're watching DCTV Sports. Thank <laughs> you. 